how to fight a Velociraptor, and win. I would guess that if you ask someone on the street which dinosaur they were most afraid of, they would either say T-Rex or, hey dude, what dinosaur do you must not want to fight? Velociraptor, brah. Velociraptor. Thanks to pop culture, handsome guy, because of pop culture, the Velociraptor has become a go-to example for a fast, cunning, jello-shaking predator. But you're never gonna encounter a Velociraptor on the street or anywhere, so how can we ever really know if the creature lived up to the hype? Science, that's how. Come on, chopper's waiting. If we wanna put ourselves up against Velociraptor, we're gonna have to go where they are, except that we can't go back to the late Cretaceous period, so we're gonna have to go to a weird island that people can't seem to stay away from. We have a little travel time, so let's be more specific. We are going to evaluate the traits of real velociraptors as scientists understand them, as compared to the pop culture raptors that we all have in our heads. Those beasts are portrayed as human-sized, scaly, and unsettlingly intelligent. They also have giant claws, great eyesight, and can run as fast as a dying motorcycle. So how do real velociraptors stack up? Would you fare better against them than humans do in the movies? Well, time to find out because we're here. Previously on this program, we tried to figure out how to fight a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Easy girl, easy. And to do that, we enlisted the help of Dr. John R. Hutchinson, an evolutionary biomechanist. And we are gonna enlist his help again today to see how to take on a real Velociraptor. First things first though, the biggest difference between pop culture raptors, easy girl. Easy. And the real thing is that real Velociraptors looked nothing like this. The most famous version of the Velociraptor, obviously the version in Jurassic Park, wasn't based on the true animal. It was based on Dionychus, another dinosaur. When Michael Crichton was writing the novels, he used this animal for the description, but he used the name Velociraptor because it sounded cooler, and then the movies continued in that tradition. These animals, though, were human sized and they did have big, scary claws, but they were not Velociraptors. <laughs> what? Now, I guess I liked him better on Park and wreck. So then what did Velociraptor look like? Well, thanks to dedicated paleontologists, we now know a great deal about this animal, thanks to the many beautifully preserved specimens that they've left behind in the fossil record. For example, we know that Velociraptor did have that killer toe claw that Alan Grant liked to scare children with. We also know that they had three clawed hands, saw-edged teeth and strong jaws, and a muscled tail for stabilization. Scientists have even found quill knobs on Velociraptor forearms, suggesting that they were not scaly, but feathered. The biggest difference between pop culture velociraptors and the genuine animals, though, would be their bigness. Unlike Dionychus, which would be about human-sized, a real velociraptor would barely come up to your knee. Dr. Hutchinson was kind enough to provide us with some three-dimensional models that he and his team have used to estimate velociraptor mass. And they found that not only were velociraptors very small, they didn't have much mass, only around 14 kilograms or 30 pounds, which puts them on the scale of a large turkey. So velociraptors were much smaller than their movie counterparts, but given all their weaponry, they are not something to be messed around with. Let's do so anyway. If you're gonna encounter any potentially dangerous animal, you're gonna want to know what it will actually do when you meet. So we know how velociraptors looked, but how would they behave? And yes, I am wearing extremely tight shorts right now. There is no doubt among scientists that Velociraptor was a predatory animal. From fossils that we found with Velociraptor teeth marks in them, we can even say that they probably employed with their saw teeth and strong jaws a puncture and pull strategy, just like Komodo dragons. But what we do not get from the fossil record is any evidence that Velociraptor either traveled or hunted in packs. So if you encountered one for real, it would probably be alone, which is good news for us, I guess. 
And despite what Alan Grant may have told you, the dreaded Velociraptor toe claw probably wasn't sharp enough for straight up gut slashing. Paleontologists now believe the claw was used for more cutting, piercing, and pinning tactics. Of course, this doesn't mean that the toe claw wouldn't be very dangerous. Look at this incredible fossil called the fighting dinosaurs. Look closely and you can even see the Velociraptor toe claw embedded in the neck of this unfortunate protoceratops. And that would be your neck if you weren't careful. <laughs> The last thing you should know before going up against one is that Velociraptor had a decent velocity. Estimating the top speed of a long dead animal isn't quite as complicated as you may think. In his research, Dr. Hutchinson estimated the range of velocities for a Velociraptor using a simple diagram of their legs like this. He then took this model and scaled it to the appropriate size, plugged in the correct mass, estimated the forces and torques in the muscles and bones of the animal, and then compared all of this to the physiology of modern dinosaurs, birds. After doing all that, Dr. Hutchinson concluded that the Velociraptor velocity range is probably between 4.5 and 11 meters per second, 10 and 25 miles per hour. Now this is not faster than the top speed of a Jeep or motorcycle, but this is certainly faster than you unless you are an Olympic sprinter. So our situation is that you are up against a very small, but very well equipped dinosaur. What would you do? What would you, wait, what would you do? I'm pausing for dramatic effect in like in Jurassic World. A mustache, really? No. It's time to fight a Velociraptor. We're as prepared as we're going to be, but how we will fare is heavily dependent on the situation we walk into. If you, for whatever reason, encountered a real Velociraptor and you were armed, just shoot her! Velociraptors were awesome animals, but they were essentially just turkeys with a lot of sharp stuff. So if you had a weapon, that would be it. The much more interesting situation, at least to me, is what you would do if you encountered a real Velociraptor and you were unarmed. Your tactics in this scenario will be determined by a misconception that you've always heard in the movies. Despite what you may have heard in Jurassic Park, velociraptors probably weren't clever girls. Relatively speaking, they had brains smaller than either emu or ostrich brains, and we don't consider those dinosaurs to be particularly smart at all, at least not how we consider parrots and ravens to be smart. So given all of this context, you encounter a velociraptor, and what do you do? Well, Dr. Hutchinson suggests the brute force approach. Say you were behind a velociraptor, you snuck up behind it. Use your superior mass to pin down all of its arms or legs, and then keep the bitey bits as far away from you as possible. And then because the neck and skull aren't particularly robust, get to work on strangling the animal while bludgeoning it until it's either you or the raptor, and one of you will emerge. That all sounds pretty straightforward, but if you've ever had to wrangle a decently sized animal, you know how potentially dangerous or even deadly this could be. Still, with these tactics, you would be seriously battered and bruised, but alive. Man! There is one more situation to consider. Again, we have no evidence of pack behavior in Velociraptor, but what if the movies were right? What if you suddenly found yourself surrounded by many of these nimble little creatures unarmed? Well, then your circumstances would change dramatically and not in your favor. You cannot outmaneuver these little dudes. And because of their theoretical top speed, you can't outrun them. You might be able to tackle one of them and take it out, but eventually through all the biting, slashing, tripping, and piercing, they are going to wear you down, like lions and hyenas can wear down the much larger elephant. In these dire straits, Dr. Hutchinson thinks that you might want to use something like a flare to try and scare the animals away, or you want to flee into an environment where they can't follow you, like in water. It won't be dramatic and it won't be heroic, but at least your life your life will find it. Oh, the flare does nothing! 
So how do you fight a Velociraptor and win? Well, given everything that we know about the real creatures, that depends a lot on the situation you find yourself in. If you are one-on-one -on -one with a Velociraptor and you're armed, you're probably good. But if you're not, be ready to bring the beat down. If you for some reason found yourself facing down more of these Cretaceous creatures, your best bet is to either try to confuse them or to flee, like I'm about to do. I love to see them on screen, but I think it's probably a good thing that Velociraptors are separated from us by 75 million years. Because science. Thank you so much for watching, Keith, and a big thank you again to Dr. John R. Hutchinson. He does amazing work, and I love working with him on these kinds of episodes, so follow him on Twitter and maybe suggest to me and or him what other things you want to fight that are long dead. You can follow me and Because Science here at these handles if you want to suggest ideas for those episodes. And if you want more of me, go to alpha at projectalpha.com, where if you sign up for a free trial, you can get this show two days earlier than anyone else and other premium content from myself, Nerdist, and Geek and Sundry. Thanks.